Here's a completed version of Wire Map 256. As you can see on the left side, on all the corners, there are the booms which are constructed, which you can see images on my blog about. There's also a uh, the two boards. They've been pulled apart, and on top of the board, you have uh, hex nuts that are tied to string, and this and they're little holes that uh, drop the string through. And on the bottom side, here's the opposite side of that hole. The string is pulled all the way down. And on the bottom here is another hole. That was drilled accordingly. And then underneath the whole thing is 256 nuts that are just hanging around. Um, they're all just off the ground. Um, they're pulling the strings tight so that all of these strings are 100% vertical. Um, in the back, I have some masking, which is just a sheet. And uh, I just wanted to blot this out, this white image. This is a projector being thrown through the sheet onto the wall. Before it was a lot brighter, and the sheet dampens it a bit. Uh, the reason for that is that, I mean, still, you can still see the projected image, but I wanted to get rid of as much of it as possible. Um, so that is 256 nuts, 256 strings, and 256 nuts on the bottom. And it is, you know, four of these things. Um, I will show you the program running it right now. As you can see in the back, that is, oops, I'm standing the projector's light. So the projector is shooting, that projector right there, it's shooting an image through the wire map, and this is the image that it's projecting over here. It's a pattern, and the pattern corresponds, it says basically, hey, whenever it's a wire that's far away, let's paint it blue. Whenever it's a wire that's really close, let's paint it red. And whenever it's a wire in between, let's paint it green. So, um, this is what it looks like. You can see here that the first wires are red, the second, ooh, shit. the second wires are green, and the third, all the wires in the back are all blue. Um, and here's a better point of view. So there's the projector, and then all these wires that are closest to the projector are red, all these wires are green, and the majority of these wires are blue. The calibration isn't perfect right now. Uh, the floor is tilted in here, so I'm blaming some of that on the floor, and um, my process, these booms that I made aren't so perfect. At any rate, so now I have 256 wires, uh, and the image is this, and uh, I'm going to load another program. This is the calibration program, and if you just bear with me, and to load the globe program and what this does is it builds a globe um, so what you're looking at here is the computer it figures out what where each wire is and then it paints each wire accordingly to a volume of the globe so this is the globe you can also change the size of it. Uh, the size of the thing really turned out to be a lot more important than I thought it would be. I thought it would just be the fact that there's more wires, but the fact that it's actually uh, about two feet in diameter um, makes it a really big thing here. And then I can change the location and size of it. So here's a lot, there's a globe that's much bigger. We're only getting the top section of it. And actually all this data is slowing down my program a bit, but that's okay. So I'll give you a walk up to it in a moment here. So there's a globe in 3D in our studio and uh, one of the cool things about this process is that because last time I was using wires and they were uh, static and opaque, but now I can actually put my hand in here and interact with them. Uh, the, as soon as I interact with them, they sort of distort because um, because uh, as soon as a human body sort of converges with digital space, uh, they can't coexist really. So at any rate, um, whenever 
I throw my hand in there, things just don't work as they're supposed to. They come up, render different images. Um, still, there's a little bit of ghosting in the back here, which is an issue that I'm trying to get rid of. All these lines are just going to be, they're blurred images from the projector light over here. So they're just throwing it through, and this is the projected image. Um, but they're throwing it through, and these little dots are mostly just uh, ghosting images. And although it's not too big of a problem in the globe program, it becomes sort of an issue uh, in the cube program, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, let's see here. So here's a cube. If you're having trouble seeing it, a lot of it is just because it's too much information. But, oh wow, that's turning out really good actually. Uh, and this is truly volumetric, so... Um, it'll be a cube from any point of view that you look at it. Unless it's too much information. So, if I were to... stand up right next to it, sort of no matter where I stand, unless I'm in the projector light, uh, you should get a sense of cube. Um, the worst point of view to see it from is straight on because the ghosting occurs and because you get to see all these dots on this projected surface. Ideally what would happen is that this installation would go somewhere uh, where the stray light would go right through and uh, I wouldn't need this surface because there wouldn't be a wall right, a white wall there behind it, there'd be a lot of empty space behind it. Um, yeah, so now uh, uh, so what's next in my process is I'm gonna try to uh, make this a Java object, uh, right now it's a processing object. And eventually, if it can be a Java object, then that means um, I'll be able to export it to people to play with in uh, Max MSP. Um, if you can play with this in Max MSP, that means you'll be able to uh, play with it with music. Um, also, if it's a Java program, you can make as many plugins as you need. Uh, I'm going to play around. I don't really know much Java, so I'm learning that. Um, I'm also going to try to find a space for this thing to live, because uh, although this place is really cool, like other people want to use this space, um, and I also want um, I want to build a community around this sort of thing. I want other people to be involved, and I want everybody to I want some programming, some really dynamic programming to happen with this thing. I think there's a lot of potential. Um, well, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I will keep you guys updated with uh, my process uh, with the with the implementation of new interfaces, of new ways to interact with this thing. Right now, it's just mouse controlled and keyboard controlled, um, but eventually, I'd hope that something else will come of it. Uh, tune in regularly. Go to fedhex.com for more info. Uh, if you want to see these programs, or if you want to hack around with the code. Uh, it's going to be on my blog, fedhex.com slash blog. Um, and if you, have any inf if you have any questions or anything, you can email me or you can check my wiki at fedhex.com slash wiki. Uh, and you can search wire map and you'll get this thing.